It's the same old song and same old song and same old song and dance. I'm John Reckon with my review of WWE Smackdown, and yep, you can probably guess how I felt about most of this show. That's not to say it was bad. There was some good storytelling, and we got a shocking return, I guess you could say, but a lot of the matches... They just blended together. Even if the action was good, this felt very much like an episode that was filler, and I don't even know her. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. So we have recaps of Reigns being up Ray and also Dominic, because I can't get enough of seeing Roman Reigns toss Dominic to the goddamn floor. That would have been really goddamn deadly had it not been obvious that there was a crash pad there, but whatever. It's a way to write off the Mysterios, who are the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, by the way, at least for a little bit. I don't really know why they even bother having tag team championships on Raw or SmackDown. Hell, I just have the NXT tag team championships defended between all three brands because what teams do you have left, especially after the recent string of WWE releases? I'll do a video about that likely sometime tomorrow just in case more happen. I do want to say right now I feel bad for everybody that lost their job. Anyway, we have uh, Heyman and Roman backstage and Jimmy says... Well, hey, Jay says he's not coming back. This is all a ruse, and it's obvious that Jimmy was finally able to get through to Jay, or they're at least teasing that, and the Usos are going to screw over Roman Reigns at SummerSlam, or something like that, because it would probably be the best way to finish off this story, and then, you know, have Roman take them on in handicap matches and stuff like that, if he happens to lose the Universal Championship. I would have him go to WrestleMania 38, but I don't think they're going to go that long. So Jimmy says, I can do whatever my brother does, and Reigns says, prove it. So then Bianca comes out seemingly for the mixed tag match that's going to kick off the show. But nope, we have more promos. She talks about beating Bailey in Hell in a Cell <clears throat> and that she gave her everything, but she beat her and all that. Da, da, da. Rollins then shows up and basically says that she needs to know her place. That must have been a Fox mandated line. And Rollins then wants a high five from her before Bailey puts her on her back. I may have misunderstood that, but I'm rolling with it. Bailey shows up. And then kind of knocks Bianca for a bit. We get a brief brawl. Cesaro shows up. And finally, we're going to get to our mixed tag match. It's about 10 minutes into the goddamn show. They are really going to have to step things up once they have crowds back. And by the way, they are going back out on the road soon. They have managed to cut it down to about 705,000 times per hour. So at least pretty soon, we will only get about, you know, 50 sustained head injuries per goddamn hour. And I kid, I kid, but honestly, it's going to be good to see WWE go back out on the road. And I'm interested to see how some of these wrestlers are going to be re uh, received because SmackDown has been generally not that bad. Even the worst episodes have been really phoned in. Raw's really been like the shit fest and NXT's just been kind of there. The pay-per-views, Money in the Bank... I'm really interested to see how that show is going to be received, because so far, some of the participants, some are good, and some are, well, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So, anyway, the mixed tag was fine. It was Cesaro and Bianca versus Rollins and um, Bailey. Welcome back, my friends, to the feuds that never end. And if you get that reference, I love you guys. Seriously, I, the matches were good at Hell in a Cell. Cesaro and Rollins was good, and Bianca and Bailey were good, but... Yeah, why bother, you know, having the Hell in a Cell match be a goddamn blow-up? Why do that? It's not like it's supposed to be Satan's structure or a cell-like structure, according to Michael Cole, who, again, is really bad at his job. <laughs> but the action was fine. Bailey, at one point, whipped Bianca into the post, that is. Another Fox mandate of my own minorities uh, whipping other minorities. So anyway, Cesaro gets a hot tag. Uh, the women get back in, and we get a distraction, and then we get the rose plant on Bianca. So seemingly, Bailey is going to get another shot at Bianca. Seriously... God damn it. Bring some women up from NXT or something once you get crowds back. Do something. Freshen up SmackDown and Raw. Just, I feel bad for all the women that lost their goddamn jobs and they could have been doing something else. Like, trimming costs is one thing, but god damn, both divisions are just freaking just gutted. They are absolutely goddamn gutted. And they have so many women in NXT that aren't doing anything. They could do better. They could do something on Raw and SmackDown especially. So... Bailey was unable to top Bianca before tonight. I may have misunderstood that, but have fun seeing or unseeing it. I'm not going to judge you much. And then Jimmy's talking to Paul. Hey, uh, what do I have to do? Win a match. But if you don't, then Heyman just wanders off. Seemingly, Roman is going to beat his cousin. This will be the second most violent beating of, you know, a cousin by another cousin that I've seen on the internet. You don't want to know about the first. Always delete your search history. Nakamura's coronation. Boogs plays into the ring. Nakamura's in white. And Pat loses it while Nakamura gets crowned. And while he's crowning, 
Pat is getting wet right next to Michael Cole. I'm just going to let that image set in there because I didn't really care about this and I like Nakamura. I just don't care because it's over a crown that hasn't meant any, it didn't mean anything on Baron Corbin. Speaking of Baron Corbin, he's like, oh, what's the point? Corbin is so upset or whatever. One of my mutuals will probably appreciate it if he goes and smokes mo more of his meat. And you know who you are. Stop thinking about it. I know you're thinking about it. Stop it. Get some help. So, uh, Rollins and tells Sonya and Pierce, who are dancing to Nakamura's theme, I need to see more footage of Sonya dancing because Sonya is goddamn great in this role. And he wants to face Roman and Money in the Bank. We'll think about it. Recaps of Majin Buu and Gable. I'm sorry, but Otis looks like Majin Buu. I can't help it. And the Street Profits. Apparently, Montez Ford is out due to some kind of undisclosed injury. He had some form of surgery. Whatever it is, hopefully he's back and healthy very soon. Uh, and then, it, whether, whether talents annoy me or whether they annoy somebody else or whatever, I just want to say, guys, let's just wish that these wrestlers stay as healthy and happy as possible. If they're pieces of shit, then whatever, you know, everything's fair game. We can just laugh at the fact that, you know, something bad happened. But the Street Profits seem like good guys, and their shtick may be getting a little bit old. But Montez is a hell of a goddamn athlete in hell. Maybe they'll make mixed tag team championships at some point, and Montez and Bianca can win that. Hell, when in doubt, add more fucking championships. So, Apollo with Commander Aziz Light took on Big E in a Money to Make qualifier. DVD on the apron, stop at the apron bumps. We get a triple German, and 14 years ago, we saw another triple German happen in the triple threat match in Atlanta, Georgia. And if you get it, you get it. So, uh, Urinagi outside. Aziz gets kicked out when he tries to hit the Nigerian nail on uh, Big E, and then we get a big ending, one, two, three. That's about it right there. And then Kayla interviews Sammy about chaos, cosmos, the, the chaos in the cosmos, in the clouds of Jupiter. <laughs> Ow. Doing a warrior impression is really tiring. Almost as tiring as thinking the querying doesn't make the world work. Once again, fuck the ultimate warrior. I'm glad he's dead. So, uh, he faces Owens next week, apparently. I guess Owens isn't really taking that much time off, but you know what? It maybe it was for storyline. Maybe they're going to find a way to not have Owens do it, and they're going to have somebody else slot in there. Sammy wants to be a war of the briefcase, but Pierce says no. It's going to be a last man standing match next week. Okay? You're messing with karma. Like, like, messing with Karma, Yoshihashi's finisher somehow made it into WWE. God, I hope not. Anyway, Sonya's Money in the Bank announcement. Carmella is the first entrant on the SmackDown women's side, and thus just ends my interest in this. Because it's Corey's, well, it rhymes with Hank. Hank Hill, that is. And if you get that, you get that. And Liv shows up to save this and punches her. And then Sonya says, hey, why don't you face Carmella in a match? She does. And she beats her. Pretty easily. With a roll-up. The most devastating maneuver in all professional wrestling. And Liv's happy. So she's in the Money in the Bank match. I think. That seemed to be the implication. Jimmy is fired up to face Dolph in 2021. I will say that Dolph had uh, pride stuff on his wrist and on his tights. Credit to him. Uh, the match is fine. Remember when Rude mattered? Remember that? Remember when Rude mattered? Like, seriously, it's been, it seems like it's been so long. Um, Rude got launched over the announcer's table, zigzag onto the steps, and Jimmy's back hit that, and Dolph, I swear, hit his back, of it. Either, he hit something really goddamn hard on the ground. He hit some part of his body, because he was not right after that. That was dangerous, that was stupid. And then, the Super Kick won a match in 2021. The world is ending, the end is near! So, we then get, uh, Reigns' uh, championship address. Heyman talks first and recaps Reigns beating up both Ray and Dominic. I will never get tired of seeing Dominic get beat up. I don't know why I don't like him. I just, he annoys me. I don't know what it is. Anyway, Heyman goes over Reigns' victories. There's no one left. Edge shows up. I love Edge and I'm glad he came back. You know, he was able to come back at the 2020 Royal Rumble. And yeah, he suffered the injury and then the pandemic hit and stuff like that. So he's made intermittent returns. I don't care. I like Edge. Edge versus Roman, I think, will be fine. I think it'll be pretty good. I don't care. I don't. He beats up Reigns, and then Jimmy comes out. He gets speared through the barricade. Where are you at, Roman? Roman is literally 50 feet to your goddamn right, Edge. Object permanence. Just fucking use it. Anyway, show is fine. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.